Hello, welcome back. It is still Wednesday, July the 17th. My guest in this segment is Dr. Bill Carroll of uh, the University of Victoria. We're going to be talking about something called the Corporate Mapping Project. Uh, so, Bill, you're a member of the Sociology Department at UVic. You're the founding director of the UVic Social Justice social justice studies program which I've heard about for many years. You've written a lot of books about corporate power and how it works. You were the president from 2010 to 2014 of Economy and Society which is a research committee of the International Sociological Association. Sure. So this information you're going to be giving us is not just off the top of your head. You mm -hmm. do know what you're talking about. So the Corporate Mapping Project, you're the co-director. How did you get involved with it? Well, I've been researching corporate power, as you mentioned, uh, Jack, for a number of years, actually. Um, the first book I published uh, was in 1986. It's called uh, Corporate Power and Canadian Capitalism. And I've sort of been working in this field ever since. Uh, I've had some other research projects as well, but I've done um, I guess four books on corporate power and a lot of articles and um, at a certain point in 2013 I guess it was uh, I got together with uh, folks at the Canadian Center for Policy Alternatives the uh, BC um, office and we decided to um, develop this project which became the uh, corporate mapping project so it's a partnership it involves um, six universities and uh, five uh, civil society organizations, uh, including the uh, CCPA. And uh, we've been uh, up and running since 2015. Um, it's, uh, it's a big project and um, pretty sprawling. Um, it has a, a team of about 100 people all together. Uh, these include uh, university-based researchers and community-based researchers, um, uh, community advisors who are active on different issues like uh, environmental issues, social justice issues, um, uh, labor issues, and so on. And uh, so uh, we've been working on different fronts, um, both to develop new knowledge through research around uh, the questions of corporate power, particularly as they relate to fossil fuels and the fossil fuel sector in Canada, and um, also mobilizing that knowledge uh, in various ways, uh, including academic venues, but also uh, various kinds of more uh, popular public-facing kinds of um, uh, research reports and blogs and so on and so forth. So when you talk about corporate power, the way I see our country is that the corporations run the country, they control the governments, they, they own the media. Mm. They are the power. It's not about us, the people of Canada, it is about them. Um, I don't know if you see it the same way, am I overstating the case? Well, I think um, corporations wield an enormous amount of power, there's no question about it. And part of what we're trying to do, part of what I've been doing throughout my career really is to try to unpack that general proposition into different forms of power and try to really understand how that power works. So we can talk about economic power, uh, but corporate power is more than just economic power. So uh, the economic aspects of corporate power are uh, fundamental, I would say, and they involve control over capital which means that corporations uh, control labor, they control labor processes, they control investment, they control how funds are allocated, which industries grow or um, fail to grow. Um, and um, all of that is, uh, you know, various forms of economic power. Um, but I think corporate power doesn't stop there. And, and in the Corporate Mapping Project, we try to map out uh, the different relations of corporate power within the economy, but also as they reach beyond the economy into culture and into uh, political uh, processes, political society, if you like. So what exactly is the Corporate Mapping Project and what were the aims uh, of putting it together? Well, it's a project that, um, as I say, um, is a partnership 
so there are civil society groups involved, there are university-based researchers involved. It's hosted by the University of Victoria, um, and uh, its aims are to shed a light on how corporate power actually works in the economic, uh, cultural, and political fields. Again, focusing on the fossil fuel sector, which we consider to be really crucial, uh, obviously for ecological, political reasons at this point in time. Um, but so, so the, the question of corporate power economically is very important. The question of how corporate power reaches into uh, culture and politics through um, elite relationships of governance and leadership, but also through lobbying relations, for example, or uh, mass media, uh, social media as well. We're sort of looking at all these different aspects of corporate power. Uh, reaching into uh, civil and political society, also looking at uh, commodity chains and uh, how, you know, um, in the case of fossil fuels, most fossil fuel in Canada is produced in Alberta and to some extent Saskatchewan, some of it is East Coast. And more but, and more in BC. Um, and uh, Northeastern BC is an in increasingly important epicenter for uh, natural gas, L LNG. So can we take a look at something like the LNG industry, which is the oncoming big industry in probably Western Canada? Yeah. To me, the thing is totally insane because it involves the poisoning of our water for fracking, which is the way they're going to be getting the natural gas. And yet, um, we can see this power structure just made it happen. The, the, the liberals loved it. The NDP loves it even more. The media keeps telling us it's a dream come true. They're poisoning our water. They're destroying our province, I would say. And yet, the the corporate mapping uh, project will show that it doesn't matter what we think or want, the power is somewhere else and they just do it. Yeah, I think it's a really good example, uh, LNG in British Columbia, on different levels of, uh, of how corporate power works. As you say, the, uh, the previous uh, BC Liberal government was all in, in terms of LNG, right? Debt-free BC, all of these vacuous slogans, right? Um, and the, uh, the new democratic government is really no better at all, even though they campaigned against the LNG industry uh, in the last election. And they, they basically uh, are also all in. Um, and uh, there is a certain amount of hypocrisy involved in that, I think, in the sense that um, um, LNG uh, natural gas is presented as a so-called uh, clean alternative, right, to uh, coal in particular. Um, and it's true that the carbon footprint of LNG is smaller than coal, uh, unless you count all of the escaped uh, methane emissions in the extraction of LNG, which by um, you know, many estimates put LNG closer to the category of coal, actually. In any case, LNG is a fossil fuel, and we know from, the, uh, uh, from uh, climate science that what we need to be doing is actually winding down the fossil fuel industries worldwide, including Canada. And what we're actually doing is stepping up these industries, including enormous stepping up in British Columbia for LNG production. You mentioned a couple of minutes ago the words elite networks. Mm. And that's two words that we do not hear very often. And most people, including myself, I mean, I have a, if you say elite networks, something comes to mind. but. I really don't know what it is, and yet I think it's of the utmost importance, so maybe you can go into that a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, in sociology, there's a tradition uh, called uh, power structure analysis, and this form of analysis looks at elite networks primarily, looking at, in terms of corporations, um, looking at boards of directors and top executive leadership and seeing how uh, different corporations actually interlock through their leadership. So somebody sitting on the board of the Royal Bank of Canada might also be sitting on the board of Suncor, for example. And um, using social network analysis, we can map out these elite relations within the industry. We can also map out how they reach beyond the industry into, say, university boards of governors or uh, right-wing think tanks like the Fraser Institute. So I've done a lot of this work over the years, and basically what we find is a very integrated elite network of uh, 
corporate uh, leaders who uh, are constantly rubbing shoulders with political leaders and so on and so forth, but also rubbing shoulders with each other through their board interlocks and the, the kinds of elite relations that, um, again, can be mapped out quite systematically. So part of what the Corporate Mapping Project does is to try to really map out those relations, um, focusing on the fossil fuel sector, but looking beyond that sector to, for example, the relations that connect Alberta-based fossil fuel sector with the uh, financial sector, which is primarily based in Toronto and Montreal. So tons of elite interlocks between those two segments, if you like, of the Canadian so corporate it's not elite. as if there's a banking industry and an oil industry and a government which have different, uh, well, at least the banking and oil, they are basically connected. They're one Very the tightly connected, yeah. In the notes you sent me, it said, um, how, how this uh, corporate power uh, reaches into our political and economic life via elite networks, and it also said, and the media. So could you maybe comment on how the media ties into it? Yeah, I, the media, um, well, in various ways. I mean, I think uh, the mainstream media tend to um, um, Increasingly, you know, as newsrooms are, are cut back and so on and so forth, there's a tendency for mainstream media to resort to press releases that are generally press releases coming from big corporations and government. And they will basically tweak those press releases and they become uh, the news, you know. So basically at that point, the mainstream media becomes a kind of conduit for uh, the perspectives of uh, corporations and the state. Um, uh, there's other ways as well in terms of um, some mainstream media are particularly um, corporate, I think, in their orientation. Post media would be an example, you know, when uh, Jason Kenney uh, decided to set up his war room, which is this propaganda mill that um, is in the process of being constructed, um, to try to intimidate um, uh, critics of uh, the Alberta fossil fuel industry. Um, when he did that, uh, Post Media uh, almost immediately uh, came out and, and offered to, you know, be part of this project, which is really quite questionable if you think about journalistic standards and uh, the need for journalists to be independent of the state. And here, here we have a major Canadian media corporation that uh, controls many dailies throughout Canada, right, basically offering itself up. We're almost out of time, unfortunately, but what are some of the key findings uh, of the Corporate Mapping Project? Well, as I mentioned before, what we found is a very tightly integrated sector in terms of the fossil fuel sector, its epicenter being Calgary, uh, and um, so the elite relations that connect the, the different business interests in Calgary are actually intermeshed very uh, tightly, and they connect with Toronto and Montreal finance, other sectors as well of the Canadian economy. Um, so just the degree to which the, um, the network is highly integrated and, and spans out internationally as well. Of course, you know, some of the major players in the Canadian fossil fuel sector have been um, um, transnational corporations, you know, like Exxon is a major player or which ConocoPhillips. Which here it's Esso. So yeah, is excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, so these um, you know, these connect into a larger kind of transnational network of uh, corporate interests. Um, but we we actually um, have found a lot of different um, ways in which corporate influence actually works. For example, we have a study of lobbying, and I, I should say our studies are all. Uh, available um, um, publicly and for free on our website. So corporatemapping.ca will take you to our website. There's a lot of material there. I'll just there. repeat that. Corporatemapping.ca. We're out of time, but we're going to continue this conversation in a couple of weeks. Um, I think I can say that this is having a huge impact on what we think is our democracy. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll move into that a little bit more next time. That'd be great. Yeah. Dr. Bill Carroll, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Jack. That was a very fast 14 minutes. Thank you very much for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.